the world's most lifelike picture. SU HD TV. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. Welcome to Recipe for Success. Now we all know how difficult it is these days to find a job, let alone that dream job. Now this show provides a young chef with the opportunity to do just that, to find their dream job. Each week a student chef will cook a dish for one of South Africa's top chefs. And if they're good enough, they'll walk away with a job offer. It's all up to them. They'll have to impress the chef with their preparation, cooking skills and presentation. I'll also be chatting to some of South Africa's leading entrepreneurs to find out a little bit more about their food and wine preference and to get their recipe for success. And then there's still the viewers competition. Now this week's student is from Durban. Hi, I'm Tulile Mshongo. I am uh, Sipo Mshongo's uh, second child and uh, Nodlaka Mshongo's only child. I grew up here in Durban. After I finished school, I um, went and lived in Rustenburg. I, I worked at Lum in Platinum for nine years. But whilst I was there, I used to move around a lot. Um, I used to be in various offices. And one thing I realized is you have a group of people coming in together and all they can do is just be on the phones. In the offices, they are just on their PCs. And then I found out that if you don't involve food, people will never get time actually to bother about the other person. And this is how I started introducing food in each and every office that I used to work in. And at the time I didn't even, I wasn't even sure that I wanted to be a chef, you know? All I knew is um, I, I would love to get people in a common place. If I could change their lives, then I can do that a place at a time. My dream would be bringing people together through food. We are so similar is different cultures in South Africa. Um, how we have stew here and we have poikikos in Rustenburg. How braai is braai everywhere you go in South Africa. Those are just the little things that make us who we are. Being on the show for me is an absolute blessing. I am very much scared to be here, but at the same time, it's the most exciting thing that has ever happened in my life. Uh, when I started this journey, I had no idea that I would be here. So this opportunity is great for me. Tulile is the most hardworking person that I know and um, I think it's got a lot to do with her being a little bit older. And so she brings a lot of life experience and I wish her all the luck and I know she would become a brilliant chef. Hey Tilly, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Not too bad. I, mean, I see you've got everything ready for today. Yeah, everything is here. A little bit nervous? I am nervous, but I'm also very excited. Listen, so uh, Chef Archie McLean, uh, great chef, a guy with really high standards. He's coming in today. Are you sure this dish is going to impress him? I'm going to try my best to make sure that he's impressed. Listen, I'm, I'm rooting for you, so all the best with that. Let's have a look at where you might be working after today's episode. Chef Archie McLean is the executive chef at Katerina's restaurant at Steenberg. He has a wealth of culinary experience garnered from working in top kitchens all around the globe. His culinary journey began as a barman in his homeland, Scotland, where he was called into the kitchen one night to help out and never looked back. From Michelin star restaurants in England to the wild plains of the Sangita Reserves in Tanzania, Chef McLean has honed a passion for creating new dishes that always offer diners the unexpected. The restaurant's name pays homage to the fascinating and feisty Katerina Russ, who founded Steenberg in the 17th century. Katerina's embraces the past, but keeps evolving with the current to maintain a fresh and innovative attitude. The menu centers on simplicity and lists the finest quality ingredients to all the talking. The contemporary heritage comes to life in the decor of Katerina's restaurant, as hints of Katerina's thrilling life weave themselves into a visual narrative, a treat for the eyes as well as the stomach. Archie, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Are you well? Good. Good, man. Listen. We've got a young student chef here, Tuli. Tuli, it's Archie. Hi, Archie. Um, you know, great chef, a good friend of mine. You've got to impress him today. Uh, it's all up to Archie. Um, so I'm going to give it over to you, Archie. Thank you. OK, Tuli, so what are you cooking for us today? I'm going to be making potato dofunois. Um, it's going to be accompanied by a T-bone steak. Uh, it's going with the fillet. Um, and then I'll make a salsa on the side, of course. I would like to make um, uh, a jus, but it will be reduced in beer rather than red wine. 
<laughs> Fantastic. I like beer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and how long will this take you? Um, an hour. An hour? Yes, it would take me an hour. Okay. Okay. Maybe let's get cracking. Thank you. When uh, Chef McLean said that I could start cooking, um, the first thing I thought was, these are big guys <laughs> right next to me, and I don't want to mess anything up, I don't want to mess anything up, I don't want to mess anything up. So um, I concentrated on my dish and the fact that I really wanted to deliver a really good dish to them. So first off, I started with my T-bone steak. I separated my steak from the bone, and then I added my herbs, which are thyme, rosemary, added uh, garlic, the steak itself on the T-bone, I wanted to marinate it uh, in beer. Because what beer does uh, to the steak, it's like any other marinade. It tenderizes it, and you want the hint of that beer in that meat, but it really needs to sit in there. So you want the crispiness to do its work. Um, so I wanted that to go first uh, with my seasoning. After that, I started prepping for my tofu noir. I started off by slicing uh, my potatoes on a madeleine. We want some real thin slices. After that, I scalded my cream with rosemary and garlic. Because I wanted to add um, other layers of colors in my tofu noir, I caramelized red onion. After that, I took um, kidney tray and started layering the potatoes. In between every second layer, season my potatoes with salt, caramelized onion, parmesan cheese. After that, I pour over my cream. Then I put my tofu noir in the oven that has been preheated on 180 degrees. And then I got cracking with my salsa. I really wanted nice cuts there. I wanted nice thin cuts. I cut it julienne's like I've never in my life. <laughs> nice thin slices because I'm more than just being colorful I wanted it to be attractive as well I cut my carrots into julienne strips red and green peppers nice thin strips as well I also wanted red onion in there chilies de-seeded so we're also using the green from the chilies to add on color and then I added tomatoes I added a bit of lime because of that bitter sweet it has there then I added sugar I use my beef stock for the sauce, butter, and sugar. Then I finish it off with nice cold beer. I knew that I wanted my dish to be hot, so I took the seeds that I took off from the chili and used them in my sauce. And then I was just putting in my, my steak, I realized that, no, 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 that's not the kind of sound I'm looking for. I'm looking for that sound and it's not making that. So I had to put it out a bit. I did not want to serve a well done fillet, no in a live fillet. So it has to be cooked just on that medium rare. And then I started with my fillet steak. Because I wanted different colors on my plate, I decided to season my uh, fillet steak with pepper on the outside, so basically I'm pepper crusting the fillet steak. That way when I'm putting it on the griddle, it would have nice griddle marks with that black peppers showing on the outside as well. So I'm coming at the end of my cooking and I'm looking at all of my work and I'm looking at those steaks, especially the fillet. I wasn't happy with what I saw. And if I wasn't happy, I could never be confident with whatever it is that I'm gonna be delivering. So it had to go back in the pan. Simply add items during wash. Add wash. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. You won't believe what you can make in a microwave. Hot blast. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. So now I'm, I'm running behind time and I'm with something that I'm not satisfied with. I was really crossing my fingers that uh, chefs understand why it's taking just a little bit longer than I had so that whatever it is that I deliver, it's up to par. Um, okay, chefs, uh, I'm done. Okay, so you're close to plating up. How was that for you? Um, I was nervous, I don't want to lie. <laughs> Archie, how did you do on time? 
good on time. You've made mm. me very hungry, so I'm interested to taste this food. <laughs> okay, Tuli, while you're getting ready for plating, last week I had a glass of wine with Rian Stassen, former CEO of Capitec Bank, to find out what's his recipe for success. Now, Rian, today, I mean, you're a very successful man, but, you know, where did it all start for you? When I went to university, I my aspiration was uh, to become a full-time drummer in a band, uh, because I played in a band at school. Uh, but my dad didn't like the idea, so uh, to become an entrepreneur was never really part of my frame of reference at that time. Uh, it's only when I started my articles at what is now uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, that I started enjoying business. And uh, my exposure at Stell, which was called that stage uh, Distillers, uh, was an eye-opener about the opportunities that does exist. And uh, I think when I, I left the Stillers for, for, for Boerland, uh, I broadened my horizons to say, you know, one day I would love to build a substantial bank, uh, not only nationally, but internationally. Rian, and then at home, you know, who's, who's cooking at home? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 do you, what do you like eating? Um, I'm sure you like, you like you know, good wine. But uh, do you cook at home at all? Of course I cook, yes. Uh, well, for four years I stayed on my own uh, year in Zalde, which was close to work. My family stayed in, in Doanville, so I had to cook for myself uh, every day. Uh, and I must say thanks to Woolies, <laughs> <laughs> I also help a bit. I like to braai, uh, fish in particular, or seafood. I did a lot of diving, a lot of spear fishing, so, you know, fresh. Uh, fish and and seafood is always high on on the menu, and then uh, I like meat as well. Um, I've got a small uh, sheep farm at Mikey's Fontaine, so you know you get nice. good quality meat there. Uh, but yeah, I, I enjoy cooking. I love Mikey's Fontaine. Really uh, nice to take the train there as well, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> um, Rian, and then your recipe for success. What would that be? You must be fit. <laughs> you must really be fit. And there's no guarantee for success. You can be the greatest artist in music or sculpturing or whatever the case may be, but you can be a failure. Uh, in business, you can be the smartest guy out, uh, but not succeed. And I think a lot of it's to do with your fitness levels. Um, and fitness is a combination of your mental health your physical health and your approach. And then obviously clarity in terms of, you know, what you want to do. Uh, and there I've learned three fairly simple lessons. The one is you must be driven to uh, satisfy the need of your market. The second one is the importance of focus. Um, and as the world becomes more uh, competitive, focus just becomes more important. Don't do 10 things, just do one thing and do it a lot better. And the third one to me is critical and especially critical as you become more successful is to remain humble. Rian, thank you very much. Um, it was really inspiring to talk to you and um, I wish you all, all the success going forward and I'm looking forward to coming back here and tasting some more wine and great food. So thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. I personally found that interview very inspirational. Now, Tuli, uh, you can get ready for final presentation, and then we'll see you later. Of course. I was really pretty, pretty, pretty happy with the way my plate was looking and, and how the whole plating came about. However, you don't know what people are expecting, and you're just hoping that whatever it is that I've made, it's really up to the standards that you know, they are actually looking forward to. Works and plays together perfectly. Note 7, Kia Classic. Recipe for success, proudly brought to you by Samsung. Everything you need to succeed. Samsung, business in a box. Recipe for success, proudly brought to you by Samsung. You don't know what people are expecting. And you're just hoping that whatever it is that I've made, it's really up to the standards that, 
you know, they are actually looking forward to. Okay, chefs, I'm finished with my dish. Um, and here it is. It's called With, um, with Love from Africa. And um, the reason why I named it like that is, in my head, I imagined it this big of a dish. It represents Africa, um, but then with the French twist, of course. So you have um, your T-bone steak, but we took the bone out and we roasted it separately. And then you have your fillet um, that is done on a griddle and with some uh, pepper on the side, on the outside, so it's pepper crusted. Um, and then the twist here is the tofu noir, and instead of the shakalaka, we have the salsa. What do you think, Archie? Sure, I think it looks like a nice big T-bone there. Um, I'm, I'm very interested in the way that you've done it. I think you've taken it off the bone. It's something a little bit different there. Um, I'm interested to get a bit of a taste of your tofu noir. So you're making that with the cheese and onion. I'd like to see the, the flavor profile in there and see how it all works together with this salsa as well. I'm expecting a little bit of a spice from the chili in there somewhere too. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what have you chosen to pair it with here today? I have um, chosen a lager beer and champagne. Um, personally, uh, I, I love my lager. But, um, you know, not everybody actually enjoys beer. Okay, so there's different people that might want their meat with red wine, for example. Um, I can have it with red wine or with beer, and I wouldn't mind try it with a with a bubbly. <laughs> That's an interesting one. Yes, you yes. covered your base as well on this yeah. dish. <laughs> okay, yes. so let's try. When they started cutting the meat and they're putting it in their plates and they're putting it in their mouth and they're not saying anything, they're like, mmm, 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 <laughs> mmm, is it bad? Mmm, it's good. Mmm, what are you doing here? So <laughs> you don't know. I feel it's still a bit under, but I like it that way, so it's, it's good for me. Mm. Yeah, that's a lager. <laughs> <coughs> yep. <laughs> um, so tell me, what's, uh, what's the five-year plan? What's next? You get a position, possibly a Catarina, and then what's the move from there? What would you like to do in the next five years? Right now, Chef, I'm still very much on the learning stage. I'm still willing to learn as much and to be nurtured as much. And um, when I'm saying I'm willing, I literally mean that. Um, I'm seriously hungry for more that this um, industry has to offer me. But then I would want to like to find out if I would uh, have a mentor or somebody that would actually give me a chance. And then after that, I would like to go back home, which is Durban, and um, try to find a, a, a balance of what they like and what I know and try to provide it with them with the arts that I've already learned. So you'd like to have your, your own restaurant? You'd like to open up something of your own? Most definitely, Chef, yes. Okay. Um, Julia, how old are you? I'm 33. 33? Yes. It's quite a late bloomer for the <laughs> hospitality industry. <laughs> yes, um, yes. I think that coming in at such a late stage, you're going to have to really listen hard, work hard to, to, get, to get further forward. You're going to have a lot of young whippersnappers who are really pushing hard to get through the kitchens. Um, are you interested in travel? Yes, yes I am. Um, if I may, Chef, yeah. I've learned throughout, since I've started this journey since last year, I've started this journey, is that you can plan everything to the T, but if it's not part of you or if it's not yours, it's not gonna happen. So um, I would love to travel for a sole reason of learning. Um, what? What's the ideal level of cuisine you'd like to be cooking? <laughs> Definitely fusion. Okay, fusion would be more of a style. What kind of level of cuisine do you want to do? Do you want to do a bistro style? Do you want to do fine dining? What, what, where do you see yourself? Fine dining. Um, I, I, I do not like the whole concept of fine dining as let's all not talk, let's all be quiet and eat only. I would like to go in a more relaxed um, atmosphere, but then that provides the fine dining um, kind of cooking or kind of experience in the kitchen, yes. Then you'd be happy to relocate to Cape Town for, for some time? Yes, of course, Chef. Okay, and where do you stay at the moment? You, you live in Durban? I live in Durban at the moment. Okay, do you have people or family here that you can stay with or would you have to find... I can start a fresh, Chef. Okay, and do you drive? Yes, Chef. You have your own car? Yes, Chef. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and just, just one more question. What, what do you think is the most important tool for a junior chef in the kitchen? What do you think is the most important thing that they need to do? Listen, 
<laughs> Done. <laughs> Absolutely right. I think it's very important. It's Shiv. Okay. Okay. So, Archie, you need a little bit more time to think about... Yes. Yeah. Yes, I think so. Now, Tuli, um, we're going to leave uh, Chef Archie to think a little bit more about, you know, uh, whether he's going to offer you the job or not. Yes, sir. Before we do that, uh, it's now competition time. There are almost 250,000 rand in prizes to be won in our Recipe for Success viewer competition, which includes a full lifestyle solution worth over 100,000 rand from Samsung, comprising of a Galaxy S7 Edge smartphone, a Galaxy Tab S2 tablet, a color laser multifunction printer, a 55-inch curved SUHD TV, a water wall dishwasher, a top mount freezer, and a hot blast convection microwave oven. From Capsicum, a City and Guilds diploma bursary in food preparation. From fine and fabulous Neo Group SA, Jean de Bois Le Coil 24-piece French cutlery set. From Grand Cru Glassware, eight Riedel varietal specific glasses. And from Mervyn Gur Ceramics, a handmade crockery set for four. Only one lucky viewer will win all of these prizes. You can enter via SMS or on our website. To qualify for the grand prize, you need to correctly answer one of our viewers' competition questions. The more you enter, the better your chances. The competition closes on Sunday the 4th of December at midnight and the winner will be announced right after the last episode on the 6th of December 2016. For more information and terms and conditions, please visit www.recipeforsuccess.tv This week's question is, what was Rian Stassen's recipe for success? Was it A. Don't eat peanuts B. Always stir your coffee clockwise C. Keep fit mentally, physically and in your approach. Please SMS Samsung followed by your answer A, B or C to 41703 or enter on our website www.recipeforsuccess.tv Okay, Archie, what's it going to be? You know, I think that initially we asked you how long you would take to do your dish. You took a little bit longer than an hour. Um, I think that you weren't really paying much attention to the stuff in the oven. I think it slipped your mind for a little bit. Um, I was watching your knife work. Your knife work was good. Um, there's a few things that I think that you still need to work on. Um, what I do like is I like the, the fact that I can see your passion. Um, you approached every part of the dish um, Clinically, you, you made sure that everything was right before you presented it. You wanted to make sure that everything was done. You put the steak back on the grill because you weren't sure that it was undercooked. You were tasting everything throughout. You might have taken a little bit more time, but you did that to make sure that everything you presented was correct and right to the way you wanted it. You're still very green. I think you've got a lot to learn, but I think that it's definitely something that I could work with. And I would very much like to invite you into the kitchen if it's something that you would, you would like to do. I would love that. So don't mind me, I'm a crier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love that. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. And we'll make arrangements. You can come and work with us at Katarina's. Oh, yes. Yes, I can sleep in my car, Chef. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to take it that far. <laughs> well done, Tuli. I mean, I think that's an amazing, amazing result there. I think, I mean, I know Archie, I know what he can do. I know and I'm sure you're going to learn so much from him. Um, so Archie, thank you very much. This this has really been awesome. Thank you. Um, and uh, I'm, I look forward to tasting your food one day, Tuli. Yes. Once you've learned everything and been the sponge and <laughs> swung it around to, you know, what the people back home want wants to taste. Yes. So good luck with that. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank yes. you. Okay. Thanks, Archie. Cheers. Cheers, man. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Thank you to Samsung for partaking in making sure my dreams come true. Thank you to Chef Ruben, um, he was a great guy. Thank you to Chef McLean for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you to everybody who's involved in this project. Literally, I would have never imagined in my life that I would be here and such a thing would be happening to me. Highly, highly appreciated. Everything you need to succeed. Samsung. Business in a box. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung.